Hey everybody, Michael Walter here with Blackbird, and today we're going to go over setting up a session for either recording at home or if you're in a large studio like we are here today at Blackbird. So creating a session template from scratch. The way I approach it is I try to be cognizant of A, what we're recording for the day, and B, um, I'm going to try to account for as many different scenarios as possibly that can happen. Experience is going to kind of lead you towards what you need to do. So now the Pro Tools is open, we're going to create a new session. First thing we needed to do, need to do is decide uh, what is our bit depth and what is our sample rate. Uh, we tend to track at 48K here as our sample rate and 24 bit depth because interfaces are fixed at 24 depth for recording. So for me, there's no real reason to go over that and do 32 bit float. It just creates larger files that you don't necessarily need. But as far as sample rate, man, choose whatever you want at your heart's content. I'm going to name this my initials and temp, and I'm going to put the month and the year that I created this, just so I know this is what I did in this particular project for this. Uh, we're going to prompt it to save in a, in a, a certain location. If you have an external drive to record to that is not on the operating system of the, of the software running, even better. Uh, if you can't avoid that, then obviously don't worry about it. And then let's start from scratch. So we need to account, let's pretend that we're doing a session that includes drums, bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, keys, and vocal. A stereotypical Nashville session, right? We're doing a full band, we're coming in, we're either gonna do demos or we're gonna do a master session. So let's keep it a fairly simple session. Let's say we have seven spot mics on drums plus a pair, of, a stereo pair of overheads and stereo rooms. I'm gonna create a bass track uh, and then here's the thing that maybe not everybody does at home. And this applies to both home recording and to working in a, on, a, on a console, is that I like to account for uh, extra passes that we're going to do after the fact. I hate, as an engineer, seeing duplicated tracks. Anything that says dot dupe, man, it just drives me up a wall. Because nothing is worse engineering to me than, than not being prepared for what you're about to do. Because what that tells me is that that guy did not account for what that session needed to be. So from here, it's just a matter of naming our, our, our tracks. Please name your tracks. Again, Pet Peeves 101 for a lot of engineers is getting audio one through audio 32. Nobody wants to do that because now I got to listen to every track and really got to make sure it's just going to save everybody time down the line if we're prepared on the front end. So let's go through and name our tracks real quick. I prefer in, in like stereo tracks more than I just like mono tracks. It allows me to keep the session a little bit more concise, but this is dealer's choice. You like mono tracks, man, do that to your heart's content. It's not, you're not gonna offend anybody. Uh, overheads, rooms. Now let's account for all the other instruments. Bass, and when I'm going through and setting up my template, when I get to here, it's I'm gonna account for an acoustic guitar first pass. If we're doing a Nashville session, most likely we're going to stack that acoustic guitar. So I'm going to account for a second pass, maybe a third, right? Uh, here we're also need same same rule applies to electric guitar. We're definitely going to have one electric guitar, and that guy is probably going to stack apart. So we're going to account for two, three passes of electric guitar because he's going to stack it. He may even add a solo. So we're going to account for that third pass. Uh, from here, I'm going to need a couple extra tracks because we need to account for keys. A keys player on a Nashville session could come in with a various amount of equipment. And at Blackbird, we have the benefit of having a lot of different pieces of gear. So not only do we have a grand piano, but we have upright pianos. We have, uh, most likely he will bring in synthesizers. So we're going to count DI lines. We're also going to account for Wurlitzer or Rhodes, that kind of thing. So I'm going to create a couple of stereo tracks, B3, uh, and I'm going to create a couple of more mono tracks for, let's say, Wurlitzer. Uh, the synth player, he's gonna. We're gonna approach him the same way as all the guitars. He's going to stack. He's going to add to. We're gonna have to account for multiple passes. So we're gonna do synth one. We're gonna do synth two. Here's my piano. If you're the second, you're gonna have to talk to the engineer that you're working with. He's gonna tell you what microphones he needs, what he wants to do. Some guys do stereo B3 just up at the top. That Leslie cabinet though has a bottom horn, so. A lot of guys like to mic that bottom horn too. So we're gonna count for the B3 top and the B3 low. We need a scratch vocal because that guy's gonna be here. He needs to sing the song with the band so the band knows where to play and where not to play so that they're not stepping all over the vocalist. 
I tend to do my vocal as a naming structure as XVOC because to me that describes scratch vocal because this is not the permanent one. And I don't want to create audio files that already have vocal one because they're going to re-sing that vocal later and I'm trying to account for duplicate file names and, and them having to recreate files or recreate naming structures that maybe they don't want to do. Before I forget, hey, create, create yourself an aux to get a click track going because and make sure you go ahead and assign that click plugin to that track, right? I like to keep it designated on eighth notes. I'll go ahead and pick a sound that I think a lot of guys in town uh, will be amenable to. It's not going to be super offensive. Nobody really likes that wood block like ding, ding, ding as their click like nothing is least inspiring as that. Hopefully we can find a sound that's a little bit closer to what's gonna be like a kick drum or something like that, because we want to approach a click hopefully as just an instrument. It's just something that's helping us stay on time. So let's look for like something that's gonna be a little bit a little bit better than that. So maybe a rim click or something. Let's just keep it on NPC right now because it's there. I know it's not offensive. 